Okay, so guys, we're going to continue with uh, sort of mapping these out and getting them drawn. Remember, I'm going to be going back and forth between a set of pliers and a set of wrenches. So whatever you do, if I'm working on the pliers, but you're drawing a wrench, don't tune it out uh, because the next tool that you have will have will be that tool. Okay, um, so you do want to pay attention. So what I'm going to do, we're just going to continue to kind of I don't know, create landmarks or just marks on the paper where we want to see or where we need to see where everything is. And then at some point, we'll just kind of connect all the dots. It'll give us the framework for the drawing, and then we'll have to go in and fix stuff up because this stuff is not going to be perfect. And that's just normal. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just what I call your best guess, okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with uh, the pliers first. And I have my pliers right here. So what I'm going to do, what I've got so far, I'll try to see if I can get both of these in the picture at the same time or on the screen. So I know exactly, I know how wide it needs to be right here. I know where this intersection is, which is right there. I know how far apart the uh, handles of my tool need to be, which is right there. And this mark right here represents where the orange starts on the handles, okay? So what I might want to do now at this point is, actually, I think maybe for this one, I might be ready. Eh, maybe not. Might not be ready. This is where that is. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and take that line where the orange needs to start, and I'm just going to, that mark, and I'm just going to create like a line right here so I can see how it goes across. Because I, because that's the way that the the tool is. Okay, so I need to see where that edge is. So why don't you go ahead, those of you who have pliers, go ahead and take where you marked where that orange starts, and just draw it across. And I would say now, I don't know, I might go ahead and start trying to draw this outside edge. I'm not going to get very far because I'm not even really sure exactly where it needs to go, but once I get to the point where I don't know what to do, then I'll probably start to remeasure out again. Um, the other thing is, too, is I could probably start sort of drawing in these um, um, handles. And in fact, maybe what I'll do, right here where the orange starts, I'm going to just measure how wide it is right there. So I'm going to measure how wide it is right there, and I'm going to put that, and again, center it right on here on this line. So I'm trying to figure out just how wide this part is right where that orange starts. I need to make it a little bit wider. First time I make a mark, it's never right. The thing about drawing is just like all what you're trying to do is almost like solve a mystery here. So you're trying to figure out just where stuff is. So I'm always constantly, okay, where do I need to start that? I'm not going to be able to draw those until I know, and that's why I did this. I can't draw these handles until I know where they need to go. So now what I can do is I can now play up this arch. So I'm going to go ahead and just draw this in, connect these two dots. And I'm just going to do just real general. So that one, of course, is going to go off the page. I'm just going to play around with these shapes for a little bit until I get it into what I call a happy place. Get that started. Okay. So I have that. Now, ideally, with this pliers, for the pliers, is that this stuff crosses over, so I have a top plate and I have a bottom plate. This is going to cross over to right here, so what I've drawn essentially right here is the outside line. So this is going to come up and it's going to be right there. So I want to figure out exactly how far away it is from this. So again, 
I might just take my hands and I'm just going to measure off this. I need to take and just figure out exactly where that needs to be. Once I do that, then I can go ahead, make that mark, and I can draw that shape. I'm going to connect these two. So what I want you guys to do, those of you that have the pliers, is just now go ahead and start kind of trying to connect things. And again, you're not going to know exactly how to do everything or draw it out until you give yourself something to start with. So I'm just going to take some of this stuff. I'm just going to try to start drawing this in. And that's ideally my top of my tool. And I'm just going to just start giving myself something to play with. Once I've got something down on the paper, then I've got something that I can work with. Is it going to be right? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Again, it's what I call my best guess, and then the, my job then from that point on is just to kind of figure it out. Now that I can see it on the paper, I can see what's going well and what's not going well. And I just kind of work with it until I can fix it. So that's as far as I'm going to do with that. I'm going to get you wrench people started. And then I'll be working back and forth between the two tools, okay? So wrench people. Okay, let me see if I can get these in the same shot, kind of. Okay. All right, so we know how wide it is. So this down here at the bottom represents the width of her tool here at the bottom, so make sure you have that on. I've got a mark right here, which actually represents where that zip tie is. Now. As to if I'm going to include that or not, I don't know. That'll be a decision when I'm drawing. And then we've got this angled line that we did. That is right here. That represents this um, basically bend. It's not even a real edge, but it's just a bend or form change in the tool that goes right there. So now, again, I know how wide the uh, top is. So I've got that I can deal with. What I can start with, if I want to, is I can start with the bottom. So what I can do is I can go ahead, if you guys look at the very bottom of your tool, it's kind of a curve. So it's not square, it's curved. So you can kind of play around with that. Now one thing that you will notice on these tools put this sideways, is that it's wider here at the bottom and it's thinner here at the top. So what I want to do is right here at that zip tie, I want to measure how wide it is because I know it's not the same as this. So I'm going to measure this and put that right there. Make sure that that's centered. And now I can connect those. And again, this is where it's helpful to not have your paper clipped into those clips on the drawing board. Um, I always have to turn my paper just so I can draw some of these edges. So there's the handle of my wrench. Again, is it perfect? Absolutely not. But now that I've got something drawn on there, I can play around with it. So I'm going to play around with this curve here on the tool. Okay. So there's that. 
and from the neck, then I can ideally go up to this point right here. So I can connect these two. And I'm just going to kind of play around with it until I'm happy with it. Am I going to leave it as is? Probably not. It's probably going to go through a lot of changes as I work through the drawing. And any time that I'm trying to figure out just how far something's got to be, I'm going to remeasure my tool. Oh, I made that way too wide. That line is too long. So what I'm noticing is that I made my stuff here too wide here, like a lot. So I need to change that quite a bit. See, what I happened is I, when I started drawing it in, it just looked like it was too wide. I went to measure, and sure enough, it's way too wide. I was way off. Wow. I need to go just a little bit wider. So again, I just keep playing around with this stuff until I feel like it's in going in the right direction here. But again, am I going to keep it this way? Probably not. But I feel like this looks a lot better than what I had at the beginning. And then what I can do is just keep on going. And I'm even rechecking all my measurements. Now, one thing I'm dealing with on this wrench is I want to figure out where this is, the top of this. And if I look at it, it's pretty much aligned with this edge right here. So this is using plumb and level. I'm looking at how things are aligned. So when I look at this point, it's aligned with sort of the inner edge of this. So I don't want to be right there. I want to be about right here. And so I'm just going to use that information, and that's where that's going to go, at least for now. Got this angle right here, again, that I've been working with, working off of. On the wrench, there is this other portion right here. And again, anytime I'm like, okay, well, how tall does that need to be or how wide it is, I'm going to measure and I'm going to mark. Because you're doing life size, guys, so that should help you out quite a lot with these proportions. That goes all the way to the top. Okay. So try to get yourself in a good spot with that wrench. If you notice, I haven't dealt with anything here in the inside, like these gears, the tacks, none of that yet. I need to get the shell finished first. So now I'm going to go back to the pliers. For those of you that are working on the pliers. Okay, so this is what I've got so far. Right here. So, we've got our piece here. One of the big problems with the pliers, because there's two handles, is getting both of those handles to look the same, just going the opposite way. So here's what I do. I mess around with both of them, okay? And I kind of, what I do is I pick the one that I like the best, okay? So I kind of play around with these arches. And I'll play, again, I'll play with both of them. So I'm just working with the outside edge right now. Right now, I think this guy might be the winner.
And each uh, one of those pliers is a, it has a little bit of a different uh, handle on it. So some, some of those even have kind of like little bends in them, real subtle bends or angles in them. So pay attention to it. But again, I would play around with both of those. See, I don't think this one is curving enough. Ah, that's one might be the one. I don't know. I can't pick. This one might be my winner. So I'm just going to play around with these handles. And again, I'm just playing around right now with the outside edge. I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go with that one. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm liking my, I actually am changing my mind because I, I think I actually like my, um, my right one better. And again, everybody's pliers have a little bit different shape and curve to their handles. All right, so what I'm going to do, I need to draw the other side of this uh, right handle. So I want to figure out how wide it is. Now, again, what you'll notice on your tools is that uh, very likely it's thinner here at the bottom and it gets a little wider up here at the top. So I'm going to measure how wide it is here at the bottom and how wide it is here at the top of the orange. And then I'm just going to measure those and then I'm going to mark it. I always double check, double check, I need to make that a little bit wider. And then once I get that measured, then I'm just going to draw the other side and I'm going to mimic that shape. Just sort of copy that shape that I've already got for the other side. right here. And then finish off the bottom. And a lot of these have just like a little kind of point on the bottom. Not necessarily in the center. All right, so I've got that right handle. Now, this is where we're going to get fancy up in here, okay? Tracing paper. So you're going to take the tracing paper, and I want you to, and this is where you might need to use your 3B pencil. So again, this is only for my plier people, okay? So you're going to take your 3B pencil, I'm using a regular pencil, and you're going to trace over the handle that you like, and you want to press kind of hard. So again, this is a change in sort of the direction and the directions that I've been giving you. So you want to press kind of hard. Again, you're only going to do this If you're a plier person, wrench people, you'll be doing this on your next tool. Okay? Make sure, again, that you're pressing pretty hard on top of that because what we want is we want to get that lead and that graphite built up. Because then what you're going to do for the next one, flip it over, and then I'm going to erase this old one I have, so I'm not going to choose that one anymore. So again, I'll go back to that again. So I traced it, pencil's on this side, flip it over so the pencil's on the other side. 
All I have to do is match it up, hold it in place. I'm going to trace back over top the back of the tracing paper, and what you will see happen is that it will transfer. So what you end up getting are two handles that are exactly the same. But again, you do have to, when you use the tracing paper and you're transferring a drawing like this, you have to press pretty hard. Again, use your 3B pencil. It's a little softer of a pencil. It'll transfer much easier. See? And then I'll just go back and just kind of set this in a little bit more. And now I can keep going. Now for these pliers, again, I've got basically one, I got a top layer and I got a bottom layer. What you're going to notice that I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw through all of this because since this is all the same plate and this is all the same plate, I want to make sure that they match up. So I'm going to actually draw them so they match up with each other so I know that they would connect correctly. I need to fix that. And then I will eventually go through and erase the parts that I shouldn't see. So if you have a tool like mine that has sort of a front plate and a back plate, you want to do the same thing. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to continue to just work on the drawing. I think I need to make this wider. And trust your instincts. If something looks like it needs to be different, then go ahead and try it. It's pencil. If it doesn't work out, you just erase it, and that's not that you'll be fine. But you're never going to know if your instincts are right if you don't give it a try. I'm constantly moving and playing around with eight shapes and angles just to sort of get a handle on what it needs to look like. Don't know how to draw something? Just give it a go and then play around with it later. I'm moving stuff a lot. If I'm not moving and changing and erasing, I'm probably doing something wrong. Once I get sort of the shell established on either the wrench or the um, pliers, let me move that over. Um, I can start plugging in some of those details. So I've got this bolt right here that actually holds the tool together.
Now, my, my uh, pliers here have these teeth. I'm not going to draw those in yet. Again, I'm not going to know where I need to draw them until I figure out where they got to go. So I'm actually going to draw this so it's a very straight, it's just basically a straight edge. And then after I've got that shape, then I'll go in and cut in those teeth. So for anybody who's got teeth on your tool, um, that's what you can do. And again, I've got kind of these different sections, so oops, I made that too long. I'm going to measure them. So I'm doing a lot of comparing and contrasting. Even though I have two sides here, they're not the same, which makes it all the more fun to deal with. So see here again, for that teeth section, I'm just drawing it as just a sort of a, a straight, solid edge almost. I'm not going to add those teeth until, again, I know where they're at. On this tool, I've got this shape that pops up. It's a three-dimensional shape, so it's an extra layer. So I'm going to have to deal with this. A lot of times I like to draw the front plate first, and then I'll deal with the sides later. So i just got to figure out where it's got to go. So I'm going to measure off again what I already have and where it's got to go. So it's about right there. Edge curves. We'll have teeth there. And this up bottom. All right, so there's the pliers, a pretty good shell of it. I'll show you how to deal with the details later. Wrench people, go back to that. <clears throat> and again, you're just going to go through and just try to map out where stuff is. Uh, you want to know how wide something is? Again, measure it. Just going to use my hands. So again, anytime I'm trying to figure out, like I'm trying to figure out where to put this top little slider part, and I didn't know where it started, but I can figure out the space between this point and that point. Since I already got that point on, I'm just going to measure from here to here. That tells me where that is. That line matches, or matches the same angle as this one. So that helps me. I think I need it to go a little bit closer. And even after I put something down, I'm, I'm moving it constantly. My drawing does not stay. It goes through a lot of different evolutions. 
I very rarely keep anything at all from my original drawing on here. So for those of you who are going into engineering, uh, this is going to be right up your alley to get used to this sort of drafting process. Those of you who want to go into architecture, same thing. And do keep in mind, guys, a major like architecture is an art degree. You have to have an art portfolio to get those majors unless you go somewhere like UC where they don't have a portfolio requirement. But if you go somewhere like Miami, you have to have a portfolio to become an architecture major. All right, so now that I essentially have sort of the shell of the wrench done, I'm going to try to figure out stuff like I'm going to go ahead and start working on like the, the twisty thing. I don't know what the technical term is for that. We're just going to call it the twisty thing. I'm going to work on where that needs to go. I'm not going to draw it yet. I just need to figure out where it's got to go. And then I'm probably going to go into the handle and get this sort of uh, ridge that it has. I know it's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to get this ridge, figure out where the hole is. And I'll talk to you guys about how to do the text and that coil here at, after that. Now on this tool too, I see the other side, so I need to draw that. If you see any part of the side of one of your tools, a lot of it, it can be really easily done by just following the shape of the edge that you already have and just adding like another sort of like layer. Just that right there. So I'm drawing, I can see the right side of this wrench. So I'm going to draw that in. And again, it's just all about um, just kind of adding another, like a strip off the side, and I'm matching the angle that I already have established. I'm going to make that thinner. Don't see that much. So right now what I'm doing is I'm drawing this side of my wrench because I see the right side. And then at some point it just sort of disappears around the bottom. So there's my right side. Get rid of my wrench board. Okay, so I'm going to try to figure out where this thing goes, this gear. I want to figure out where that is. And I'm going to use what I already have drawn. I have this edge here where the form changes. And it looks like it goes through kind of the top of part of it. It's not through the middle. It's through the top. So I'm going to use that information. And I can even measure how far off it is from this side. So it goes up a little bit above. How wide is it?
So I'm just going to figure out where that box is. Uh, I need to make this longer. So again, I'm not going to be able to draw that twisty thing until I know where it's got to go. Now I can draw, um, and mine is kind of connected. I know my, tool, my tools are a little bit different than your guys' tools. This rolls right into that ridge. And so on the wrench, you just, you'll all see you have sort of this kind of like a border around that lower part where the text is. And build that up. And then I've got that kind of hole. All those wrenches have sort of a hole down here at the bottom. So I'm going to just kind of work on that. Kind of sketch it in very loosely, and then I take my eraser through there, and I just kind of uh, erase out the real shape. So there's that part. I'm going to give, just give everybody a chance to kind of work on getting yourself up to this point where you basically have sort of like a, a good foundation or a shell of your tool established. As you guys can see, I have no details. I don't have the teeth on my tool yet. I don't have the text on my wrench. I don't have the twisty thing, whatever that's called. I don't have that on there. I don't have any text here. I haven't even really even uh, established uh, where the, even the orange uh, handles. I haven't drawn those in quite yet. So um, get yourself to a good point, and then I'll show you how to do the details. Okay, so guys, I'm going to talk to you about how to do the details. Okay, so. Let me start with plier people, okay? So plier people, what I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to make the orange handles actually look like it's that foamy, rubbery material wrapped around metal. So basically these are just like sleeves that were slipped on the metal, so those the metal handles are underneath this. We want to make it look like they're going around it, so it's going to make it look more three-dimensional. I'm also, too, going to show you guys how to kind of deal with the text here. So a lot of you guys have Pittsburgh on there. Sorry for Bengals fans. And then I'll show you guys how to do the teeth, okay? So um, I'll start with the handles first. So this is really easy. I can now kind of get rid of that line that's going across. I'm just going to clean this up. So this is where my edge is going to be. Okay. To make this look like that's that foamy, orangey material wrapped around it, what I need to do, I'm going to get rid of this really, really straight line, and I'm going to kind of bow it a little bit. So I'm going to curve it a bit, okay? Right there where that needs to be. Okay? 
But in addition to that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to, let me zoom in so you can see this. So I curved this a bit. I'm not keeping it nice and straight. That's how it can look like it's kind of curving around or wrapping around. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that line and I'm going to go a bit on the outside and pass the edge of the metal. Okay, you see how I made those a little bit wider? Not a lot wider, just a little bit. I'm going to raise part of my handles here, just the top. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect that outside that I just drew out to the rest of my handle. And then I'm going to curve it around the outside. So it looks like, again, it's wrapping around. Okay, I'll do that again on this one. I got to clean up some of my pencil too, that would help. All right, so I took those outside edges of that line that I took past the metal. So here's the metal, this is the orange. And I'm going to just reconnect it to the rest of my handle here. So I want it to look like it's wider than the metal that it's covering. And I just had to do that at the top. And then to make it look like it's wrapping around, so if you see how it is right now, all I have to do is just curve it to the back. Now it looks like it's wrapped around. And it's the smallest, smallest detail, but it's just like when we worked on the shoe. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go. You can see how I did that. You want it to make it look like it's wrapping around and on top of something. you got to go past the edge and then extend the line towards the back. So there's that. Now for the teeth. Okay. Now remember, when I drew this tool, I drew it as if I could see through it. Now I need to erase the part that I shouldn't see. So I shouldn't see this edge, so I want to get rid of this. So it truly does look like it's on top. So that helps out a lot. And it still looks like it connects, that back plate connects to the other part of it. Now I'm going to work on these teeth. So what I did was... You guys remember, I just drew just a basically kind of a straight line where those teeth need to go. So now what I'm going to do, and I'm going to turn this so it's just easier for me to draw. Let's see if I can do this without. Okay. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to just erase over top that line. I will still see that line. It's not going to go away. It's still there. And all I'm going to do on this top part is that the teeth marks are really small, so I'm just going to do really small kind of zigzag like that. Now the teeth right here are bigger and chunkier, so I'm going to spread those out wider and just follow that line that I erased. And there's my teeth. I'll do the same thing to the other side. I need to turn this around so I can, there we go. So again, I'm going to erase that line that I had. I can still see it. Do my little teeth. Try to match what I got on the other side. And then now I'm going to do the bigger teeth. That looks a little wacky right there, so I'll fix that one. There. Okay. Now the other thing, I can see the inside of this. I think I need to fix these teeth though first. There. I can see the other side. So I'm going to draw this other side and see the inside here.
And I can also see the other side of this section, so I need to draw that in. Which is actually going to cause me to make this wider. I'm going to have to open this one up. the other side. So I'm just looking to see what sides I see. I need to make this wider right here because I see this side. So there's that. Now, how to deal with the Pittsburgh for the pliers. Okay, so for those of you that have pliers, you guys look, um, your text, your logo, I'm going to try to turn this so I can, yeah. Your logo is a print. So it's been printed on there. So what I need to do is I need to just figure out where it's got to go. I'm going to actually measure. It looks like it's in the middle of the handle. I'm just going to measure how wide it is. And I'm going to place that right here in the middle. Of my handle. And what I'm going to do, and this is the biggest mistake people make when they're trying to do the, the logo, is that they assume that they just need to start writing. You've got to, again, figure out where it's got to go and what size it has to be before you start even drawing a single letter. And notice how I'm saying drawing the letter, not writing it. Those are two different things, okay? So I've got my box where I need Pittsburgh to go. I think I'm going to make it just a little bit longer. So this is the framework for my logo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that in half. So I can see where the middle of the word needs to be. And then I'm going to very simply look at Pittsburgh and figure out what letter needs to be in the middle. So I need to count how many letters there are. So there's 10 letters. So that, needs, that means I need five on the left side and five on the right side. So S is where it's got to start. So what I'm going to do... I'm just going to start right here in the middle. I'm going to do the S and the B, because those are two right there in the middle. And then I'm just going to go from there. Now, if I need a little bit more room here and there, that's fine, but we're not talking about a huge difference here. I got it in. Okay. And then I'll work my way backwards for the rest. I need to do TT. Since I'm doing this out of order, um, it can be hard. You can very easily misspell it, which let's face this. If you're, a, if you're a Bengals fan, you don't really care if you spell Pittsburgh right. But we do want to spell Pittsburgh right. 
Ah, I think my T is too far away. There we go. And I have just enough room for the P. Had to work a little bit outside that box that I made. And like I said, if you have to go a little bit outside that box, not a big deal. They can go in and touch stuff up. Okay, so there's Pittsburgh. So there are your details on the pliers. So now I'm going to start talking about the wrench. The number one thing everybody's concerned about with the wrench is how to do this twisty thing here. So I'm going to show you how to do that first. That's the hardest part. Everything else is, is pretty easy. Okay. So when you look at this, it's kind of hard to see because the light that I have is that essentially it's a uh, kind of like a tube, but with um, sort of threads wrapped around it. So I'm going to start with making the tube in the middle. So the tube is just going to go right here in the middle. I want to make sure I give myself room. Now, a lot of you guys who have the wrenches will see like a little maybe post-it note taped on your board that actually shows my illustration on the twisty thing. So I'm going to do the, I'm going to kind of make the tube first. Making sure that I have room sort of above and below this. Okay. And now I'm going to turn this so it's just easier for me to draw this. Try to get as close as I can. Off. Okay. So I've got my tube. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to draw these threads. Now when I draw these threads, I want to think about what angle they're going at. So I'm just going to draw them just like lines right now. And I have part of one right here. So I'm just drawing them as single lines. To make it look more three-dimensional, I've got to take those lines and I need to make them have two edges now. Now I have my twisty thing, technical term there for you. Uh, it's not focusing. Hard to see. Okay. The rest of that space will sort of get worked out uh, with a lot of shading. I actually think I need to make my box just a little bit smaller. I think I made it a little too big, so I'm going to kind of shorten this up. Keep that angle. And just notice, you know, I'm constantly fixing this stuff. So there's my twisty thing. I've got this uh, little kind of like gear that pops out right here. And I've, I can see the very far right side of my tool. So I'm going to draw that in. Well, actually, I have the right side. Now I just need to do the gear that's there. So i got to figure out where that's at. Oh, it's off camera. Thank you. <laughs> when I'm zoomed in like that, it's hard to see. So I'm just going to pop that on. Kind of looks, I don't know what it looks like. Kind of just looks like a weird triangle almost. So I'm just going to draw that on there just like that.
And so now I'm going to deal with the text on this one. So I'm going to turn this, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit more just because the wrench is a little bit bigger. All right, so the text on your handle for the wrench is a lot different than the text that's on the pliers. The text that's on the pliers is um, a print. Okay, so it's been printed on the tool. So I could, all I did was just do very simple, just kind of thick letters. That's all I did. The difference with the wrench, so you guys thought you had it easy with the wrench because you didn't have two handles to deal with. But this is three-dimensional. So how do we make it look 3D? The way that I'm going to do this is I'm actually going to draw it like block letters. So I'm not going to just do thick letters. I'm going to make them block letters, and I'll show you how to do that. I'm basically going to start the same way I did on the pliers. I need to figure out where the words need to go first. Now, I have drop forged on, ma on mine. I believe all the wrenches that you guys have have Pittsburgh on them, too. Again, I'm sorry, Bengals fans. That was unintentional. That's what Harbor Freight's had. Okay? okay? So I got to do the drop forged. You guys are going to do Pittsburgh. And I believe, too, you guys also have the measurement of your wrench on yours, too. So I want to figure out where it needs to go. I'm going to measure, literally, with my hands, how wide each one of these uh, words needs to be. And I'm going to just draw a little box where that needs to go. Okay, so I've, I know how wide they need to go. Now I'm going to create a little text box basically for them to sit in. Again, this text box represents where the word has to go, how tall it's going to be, and your biggest.